Uh, I'm Christina Potter. Thank you for joining us today for our press conference for our upcoming World Championship event that's going down this Saturday at the StubHub Center, March 10th. Uh, our main event features world champion Oscar Valdez defending his title for the fourth time against Scott Quigg, who's come over from the UK, and we're super excited to have him here in LA fighting for the very first time. Uh, you'll get to hear from them later. Uh, first, a couple notes, uh, information about the fight. There are still tickets available at the StubHub Center or on AXS.com or by phone. I think they start at about $27, so if you're in the LA area and would like to come watch a spectacular night of boxing, if you know anything about the StubHub Center, you know that it's like AKA the war grounds, I think Timothy Bradley called it, but action-packed fights happen there from first bell to main event. So join us there, and if you can't, the fights will be aired live on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and streaming live on the ESPN app. <clears throat> The undercards will start at 7.35 Eastern time with the first bell. Those fights will be streamed exclusively on the ESPN app, leading up to the main broadcast on ESPN and ESPN Deportes, which will start at 10.35 Eastern time. So, with Why all that Eastern? Said, we're in the West, we're in the Pacific time. Right, but we're going, to the, we're going all over the country yeah, right yeah, now. So we need, them do we need you know UK time, time, Eddie? Yeah, you yeah, give them UK yeah. time too? <laughs> So, 7.35 Pacific time per the boss's request. So, uh, let's just get right into it, Bob. 4.35 Pacific time. With the first bell, yes. But ESPN goes on at 7.35. Okay. Pacific time. Correct. Okay. Everybody got that? <laughs> Correct. All right. So, Bob, obviously anxious, excited. This is a great card. You have... Uh, Michaela Mayer, you have Esquiva Falco, a ton of good undercard talent. So before we get to the TV broadcast, why should everybody get there early to check out uh, some of our undercard fights before they switch on over to ESPN? Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm really delighted to see uh, Andy Ruiz here. Uh, he fought uh, Joseph Parker, uh, lost a very close decision in New Zealand, uh, was made Parker the championship, and now uh, Joseph Parker goes over uh, to Wales uh, March 31st and fights uh, Anthony Joshua. Uh, Eddie Hearn is promoting that fight. Should be a tremendous fight. Uh, but Andy just missed uh, being over uh, in Wales. Uh, I think that uh, now that he's back, uh, he's going to be a force to contend with in the heavyweight division. Uh, we have so many great fighters on the card, in addition to the main event. Uh, uh, Alex Sacedo, uh is one of the up and coming future stars uh, in the sport of boxing, and he'll be on the card. Uh, we also have um, uh, on the card uh, uh, a great, great fight Andy Vences and De Leon, uh, a real pick 'em fight. Uh, Michaela is on the card, and I'm really pleased uh, that she's going to be on the card. Uh, so I just think this is going to be a great, great night of boxing. Barboza fights Reed on the card. Uh, the card is loaded. There's nine fights, and people should get there early. 4.35 when the first bell rings, then nine fights, and they're all really good fights. And the main event, well, you've been talking about the main event for a while. Uh, Scott Quigg is a terrific, terrific fighter, a former champion, and he's going to be a real test for the champion, Oscar Valdez. Uh, I can't wait for Saturday night. It should be a great night of boxing. It should, and, and Top Rank is promoting this fight in the main event in association with Matchroom Boxing. Eddie Hearn, welcome. Welcome back to California and to the U.S. Um, he mentioned Scott Quigg in our main event against Oscar Valdez. Um, you know Scott just as well as anybody does. How ready is he for this opportunity? Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you, Bob, for the opportunity. Uh, big thank you to Carl Moretti as well. There's not many people that you really enjoy doing business with in boxing, but Carl Moretti and the Top Rank team are definitely one of them. Um, it's a great card as well. I'm really interested on a bit of a scouting mission. Obviously, Andy Ruiz, um, very relevant in the heavyweight division right now. And Michaela Meyer as well. Obviously, we've got Katie Taylor, just about to become the unified lightweight champion of the world. So, uh, as a future opponent, for sure there. 
It's a great main event. And uh, I was saying to Bob that he must be very, very passionate about his relationship with ESPN and putting on great fights because I was shocked when they accepted this fight because they could have chose someone a lot easier and a lot cheaper as well. But they're investing in great fights. And Valdez against Quigg is a brilliant fight. You know, you have a former WBA super bantamweight champion of the world, the current WBO featherweight champion of the world. Scott Quigg is all action. So is Oscar Valdez. And uh, we had a great night at the StubHub Center a few years ago when Kel Brook beat Sean Porter. We had a couple of hundred Brits there. There'll be a couple of hundred Brits on Saturday night making plenty of noise. Plenty is that of who's noise. bringing the rain, perhaps, that I'm hearing possibly, about? Possibly, but no, there won't be no rain. We've been good, informed. Good. I spoke to someone this morning. They said Not definitely gonna no rain. Not going to rain until Sunday. Good. Yeah, exactly. Um, but they'll drink all your beer dry. They'll make plenty of noise. <laughs> and uh, it was about just over two years ago, uh, Scott Quigg boxed Carl Frampton in a, a unification fight in Manchester. 20,000 people, 10,000 Irish, 10,000 Mancunians. And it was just a, a remarkable night. And Scott Quigg just underperformed that night. And he's always lived with that in his mind. But Saturday is the time to forget all about that and to go out and be the king of the featherweight division. Because as far as I'm concerned, that's what this fight is for. Not just the WBO championship, but to prove you're the best in the featherweight division. And that's what life and sport is all about. And I'm very, very confident that on Saturday, Scott Quigg becomes new world champion. Yeah, I just want to comment on one thing of what Eddie said. Eddie knows, and he's done a great job with Sky uh, in England, he knows that it's great to have a relationship uh, with a big network, but unless you give them quality fights, you're not accomplishing anything. And that's what we've determined to do for ESPN. We have this exclusive contract with ESPN, but we are determined that the fights we put on will be competitive, quality fights, because that's the way you build the sport. Well, and that's in every fight from opening bell on. You have Brian Lua in the opening fight, Michaela Mayer, then we go to Esquiva Falcao, Andy Ruiz, Arnold Barbosa, Vince Delion. I mean, it's Maxim Dadashev is also fighting on the card, Olympic talent, undefeated talent. So, again, the card is stacked. And, Michaela, you know, Eddie mentioned Katie Taylor, and I know you don't, you're, you're focused on this fight. This is your fourth fight. You have a tough opponent who's never been stopped. But um, it, as far as representing women in boxing in totality, something that we've talked about, uh, that's where you want to be on that big level and on those big stages against, you know, names like Katie Taylor. For sure. Um, first of all, I'd like to say happy International Women's Day um, to all the women out there. And thank you, Bob and Top Rank, for supporting women's boxing. It'll be worth it. I promise. Um, but yeah, down the line, that, that is going to be a great fight, not just for our own personal careers, but for women's boxing in general. And I want it to happen at the right time where the world is watching, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great for us. You're also fighting in a place near and dear to your heart, LA. It's not the first time, but first time fighting at StubHub Center. I know you know the history of StubHub. Uh, and I know that in your last fight, you were anxious to get the knockout, although it went the distance in a, in a spectacular performance. What could the fans in Carson look forward to come Saturday from you, Michaela? Um, I've definitely had a great training camp. Um, Coach Al always has me learning, so I always feel like every camp I really jump a level. Um, we have a game plan for this fight. Coach Al's a strategist, so he always has a specific game plan for me for every opponent. We're going to go out there and execute that, and if the knockout comes, it does. Obviously, that would be great because I want people to know that women cannot just be on big cards, but we can put on exciting fights too. So I, wanna, I definitely want to reel in some new fans this weekend. And as long as you just relax, right, Coach Al? Just relax. <laughs> as long as I just relax. That's all it takes. Thank you, Michaela. Um, we'll go down all the way to the other side. Andy, how you doing down there? Uh, I'm feeling really good. You're feeling good? You yeah. should be. Uh -huh. I mean, you're getting back to doing what you love. It's been 15 months since we last had this type of conversation. So go ahead and tell everybody um, about your training camp with Manny Robles over at Legends Gym and how ready you are just to get back in action in a talented heavyweight division. Well, I want to thank God for being here, um, you know, getting back in the ring. It's been a long time, long vacation, um, <laughs> been making babies. I'm already on my second one. <laughs> um, you, you and me both. You know, so <laughs> now it's time to work hard. I got a new team, new camp with Manny Robles. I got um, Estrellita, uh, Memo, the conditioning coach. So now that we have a good team, um, I think it's going to be time for me to be in really good shape and really good condition and so I could be in the top ten like how I was. 
And Eddie, you could probably speak to this. I mean, you saw him up close and personal. That was a very, very close fight against Joshua Parker. But in kind of the landscape of the heavyweight division, he wins this fight, uh, gets right back there. You see him kind of up in contention for, for being in the, the top of the division again. Yeah, I think he was so close. The heavyweight division's crying out for contenders. Right. You know, obviously you've got the elite guys, Joshua, Parker, Wilder, saw in a great fight with Ortiz at the weekend. But, you know, beneath that, you need the guys coming through snapping at the heels of everybody else, you know, whether it's Ortiz, whether it's Gerald Miller, whether it's Andy Ruiz, all these guys coming through, Bryant Jennings as well, you know, with yeah. top rank, looking to make a name and a challenge for the title again. So all these guys, what a time to be a heavyweight. Right. You know, and, and great time to make a statement and start calling out these, these big names. And Bob, you, you know, he has the fastest hands <laughs> from a heavyweight. Obviously, you saw the talent in him at a young age, but how close do you think he is to getting back to, to where... Uh, he can challenge for a world title again. And, and, and Christina, you have never seen Andy in as good a shape as he appears now. He's had a great, uh, right, Andy? Yeah, a great Memo camp. did a hell of a job with right. you. Yeah, and we barely started. You know, we barely have a month and a half, two months training uh, together. So before I would um, fight and uh, go crazy, but this time I'm going to fight, stay in <laughs> shape, stay training, stay crazy. in the gym. <laughs> And, uh, you know, that we're athletes. That's what we have to do. And he's honest. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, you focus 100%. you got a good team. It's kind of like you hit the reset button, if you will, on, on where your career was. And you Yeah, know, I'm, I'm really blessed. Um, I feel I should have done this in a long time ago. I should have had this great, the great camp, great team that I have. So I think this is going to be uh, an advantage. And, um, you know, sky's the, sky's the limit. All right. Thank you, Andy. Appreciate you. Thank you. you. The man that looks very dapper to your left, Alex. How are you doing down there? Hello, Christina. Uh, hello, everyone. Doing good. We're happy to have you here. Um, you had a great training camp, as always, working up there with Abel Sanchez in Big Bear. I don't think that people quite know what, what that's like and how grueling that that experience can be. It's, it's, it's quite unorthodox up there. But without giving away too many secrets, just tell everybody how great of a training camp that you had up there uh, with Abel and how prepared you are to walk away with those two belts still on Saturday night. Yeah, no, uh, of course, I'm very happy to to be here in this uh, undercard. Um, it's a great card, uh, and we had a great, great training camp. We was in Big Bear for seven weeks. Uh, tough runs, uh, seven degree runs in the mornings. Uh, it was very cold in the snow. Uh, so I'm ready, I'm ready to come out and you know put on a show for everyone that's gonna be there. It's kind of like after Crawford uh, vacated the belts to move up to 47, the landscape is wide open in that 140-pound division. Uh, where do you see yourself and, and uh, where would you like to be this year in terms of maybe getting an opportunity to fight for one of those major belts? How of far course, away do you uh, feel like you are? Uh, I'm already ranked number three on the WBO and WBA, so I'm just, I mean, you know, we have to get this fight out the way. Uh, we have a tough opponent in front of us, but we're going to do our job. We had a great training camp and... Uh, just waiting, waiting for that moment, waiting for that moment. Bob, I'm sure maybe he'll be watching the fight on March 17th pretty closely between uh, Amir Imam and Jose Ramirez. He may even come in. Hey. I mean, Alex is Mr. Sacedo. Alex Sacedo is Mr. Hollywood. <laughs> I mean, he has more Hollywood stars in his corner <laughs> than any other fighter. So, Alex... You get Mark Wahlberg to get on his plane and take you <laughs> oh, to New so York. So he's got to sure, fly you, though. Sure. No, we'll be <laughs> there. We'll be there watching. Uh, we'll see if Ramirez can get this fight out of the way. It's going to be a tough fight for him, but uh, looking forward to facing the winner or, you know, uh, WBO, WBA, like I said. Uh, I'm going to be ready. All right. You're always ready. Undefeated, so you stay ready. All right. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. All right. Let's get to uh, Eric DeLeon. Eric, how you doing? Good, good. Thank good you for having back. me here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we couldn't do this without you. So, <laughs> yeah, You're in the co-main event. He will be opening this show on ESPN this Saturday again at the StubHub Center, uh, 7.35 Pacific time. Uh, Eric, big opportunity for you. Uh, we know the main event is going to be a banger. Everyone's been talking about it. But also another fight, we talked about it kind of yesterday, it is your fight with, with Andy Ventus. It, not the fight on social media, not all that, but the fight that's going to happen in the ring come Saturday. How ready, how prepared, because physically you look to be in the best shape of your career. Yes, without a doubt. Um, I just want to thank everyone here, uh, my team and uh, top rank, Bob Arum, everybody for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a big opportunity, and I'm more than ready. I'm excited, and I, I can't wait for Saturday night. Uh, when your opponent, I mean, you, you've never been one that really has been too vocal in terms of 
talking back and forth with your opponent, and you haven't so much this time, but, but that, that's what Andy does. It's not just because of you. It's just because you're next. You know what I mean? It's not like it's out of character for him, but kind of how do you, how do you take that? No, not at all. I'm focused in my, in my job, what I got to do on Saturday night. Uh, I'm not much of a talker I'm outside of the ring. I do my talking in the ring, and I'm more than ready. I know he is, too. And the fans are going to be the winner, and, you know, may the best man win. I'm ready. I'm ready for big things. So, and everybody's going to see Saturday night what I'm all about. All right. We're looking forward to it. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, guys. Andy? Huh? Real serious down there. The other Andy. Yeah. <laughs> two, two Andys. Andy just, Ventus. Just, just listening. Just listening. Sure. So um, you have a belt to defend on Saturday night. You're going into arguably your toughest test against Eric De Leon. I mean, every fighter says, we don't know till we get in there. But he is undefeated. You're undefeated. How do you make sure you walk away with the O on Saturday, keeping your O? Right. And um, just want to thank uh, top rank Bob Aaron for giving me this opportunity I also want to thank all the matchmakers and everyone behind scenes who really put this event together because not only does it give me an opportunity to fight and chase my dream, it gives all the rest of the fighters here a chance to showcase themselves. Uh, but to answer your questions, Christina, I know you see me. I got the WBC Continental America's Champion title, uh, but I don't train as the champion. I train as the underdog. Uh, but I've trained super hard for this fight. I've trained as if I had nothing. I reminded myself where I've come from. And I've put in countless and countless hours in the gym. Even before this fight was announced, um, I saw it coming. We saw this fight coming a long time ago. Uh, me and my coach, Angel Cordon, were on it. Um, I feel like we were 10 steps ahead when this fight got announced. And if anything, everything flowed smoothly through camp. And um, I'm just blessed to be here. And um, I'm just doing this fight uh, and dedicating it to my manager, Herb Stone, who always believed in me and always saw something in me. And uh, rest in peace, but uh, I'm going to make him proud Saturday. Yeah, you guys kind of have that somewhat unfortunate parallel because you have Emmanuel Stewart, who you started yeah, your career absolutely. with. And you yeah, fight we'll for. Fight and, you, and you with Herb Stone, who are two legendary you know, people in the game. So you kind of both carry them with you, I would imagine, into the ring. So um, I just kind of wanted to put that out there. But, Bob, uh, I know you're very, very excited about this fight. You've said to other media and stuff that they, you think that these two could steal the show. Uh, come Saturday night. With I don't know who's styles. stealing any show. All I know is that the public is going to get the some great fights. These two fights that are the feature fights on the card are spectacular. Nobody knows for sure who's going to win. Uh, I, I just can't wait. Uh, uh, I, you know, uh, as far as the main event is concerned, obviously I'm pulling for Oscar because no, no. Uh, nothing personal, Scott, but Oscar's been with top rank from the beginning, and he's a great young man and a great fighter. This is his toughest fight, and I hope that he pulls it out. But we're going to see, in any event, a really good competitive fight in the main event and the semi-main event and the other fights on the court. Scott, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Welcome back to the... It's LA area. I know you and Freddie have been working hard in the gym. Like you mentioned, no, no in and out, no fat. We haven't tried any of that stuff yet, but we talked about after, no. <laughs> after the fight. But business as usual for you, um, or or maybe not because of the the guy you have across from you. I mean, do you feel like this fight maybe does hold a little bit more weight, an opportunity to become world champion again, or is it just the next guy up for you? Um, obviously, this is a, another. This is a bigger fight. This is. Um, Going to, you know, Oscar's being built as the, the next featherweight star. You know, and, and he, to be fair, he's not put a foot wrong so far. He's 23 and all 19 knockouts. Uh, but it's something that, you know, when Eddie got on the phone to me and the fight was offered, I told him to snatch the hands off. You know, this is a fight that uh, excites me. You know, I respect Oscar, respect his team, his trainer, uh, Manny, you know, the good people. They want to be the best. So you've got to fight the best. So again, this is a voluntary, I take my hat off because this is a, a voluntary de defense. They didn't have to pick me. Uh, they could have chosen an easier defense. Uh, so it's, you know, credit to them though, but I'm going to make sure on Saturday night that they regret picking me. And it's kind of a unique situation between the two of you because uh, they've sparred together before. 
so what is that like? Obviously, it's going to be completely different when you're there, no headgear, et cetera. But um, do you feel like when you've sparred an opponent before, it kind of is that an advantage, not only for you, but for him? Because you kind of get the, get the nerves out of the way because you kind of know what you're in, up, you're in against? Uh, or not so much? Not so much. Okay. You know, at the, at the time, you know, I always, we never knew whether we could cross paths. Um, there was always potential with that. I was preparing for Viral Simeon and he was preparing for the Mariaga fight. Yeah. Um, we, and we both helped each other get ready for that. We gave each other good work. And, you know, all I know is that going from the spars, you know, the fans are going to be in for a real treat. Yeah, the, the sparring was like watching a fight. I was sitting back like, I should have paid for a ticket for this because it was, it was quite entertaining. You guys didn't hold back, and I'm happy that the fans now will be able to see you, especially here in L.A. for the first time. Do you just want to comment on that, being able to come and show your skill set, not, not only on ESPN for the first time, but to, to a new audience here yeah. in the States? I mean, like I said, first of all, I want to thank, you know, top rank, match room, you know, for this opportunity. Yeah, being shown live on ESPN, um, this is a great opportunity. It's people are saying, do I, obviously it's going to be a pack full of Mexicans in there, and I'm going to probably be booed in there, but I'm going to be planning on being cheered out. Uh, but this this is something that you know making the US debut excites me. And I don't feel like it's going to be away from home. This is the third camp I've been out here now. I don't have to travel back to the UK to fight. I'm just going to you know roll up and. On Saturday night, you know, put into practice all the work that me and Freddie and all the team Gavin have put in, and you know, I'm very confident we're going to do the job. We're looking forward to it. Thank very you. much. So, uh, now to the champ. Thanks for waiting patiently. <laughs> uh, going, Christina. Uh, the sparring, like you mentioned, between you two uh, was phenomenal. And was it ever kind of in the back of your head, like I might, I might see this guy in, in the ring again, being the fact that he was a, you know, a world champion at one time and in your division? You, you think about that? Uh, not, not really, because uh, I was really focused on my fight in that day. It was uh, against Mar Miguel Marriaga, so I was just focused on that. Uh, the sparring session was just uh, a sparring session for me. You know, uh, we did, we did, uh, we did some great work. Um, I've been telling everybody if if, uh, if a fight something near as a sparring session, everybody can expect fireworks because um, you know Scott Quick is a, is a great fighter. He's a great fighter, and um, we proved it that sparring session. So everybody can expect some some good fights that night. Uh, speaking of good fights, your last fight against Genesis Cervania was a hell of a fight. You and I kind of uh, sat down last week and, and broke some things down in that fight. Uh, you hitting the canvas for the very first time as, as a pro. How does that motivate you, and what kind of things do you and Manny, you know, get right back into the gym and work on to make sure that that doesn't happen again? Well, it motivated us a lot. Um, obviously, me and my trainer, Manny Robles, we did a tremendous job at the gym, just going back and forth on what, we, what mistakes we made. And, um, you know, the good and the bad, we worked it in the gym. And we're going to prove it this, this Saturday night. So, um, like I said, we're, we're very excited for, the, for this moment, for this, for this Saturday, because I know, like I said, Scott Quiz is a, is a, is a good fighter. And um, the Genesis Savania fight, it's in the past already. We already tried to, com to correct our mistakes. And we're going to show it this Saturday. And you could have took a, a different approach, a different defense. Like he said, I he wasn't the mandatory uh, to fight for, for your title defense, but um, you were asking for the big names, and, and here you go. Here's one right across from you. Oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking for the bigger names, and here we go. We got one in front of us, so now I've got to take it more, more than seriously. And I've, I've heard this plenty of times. You want to you wanna be considered the best, you've got to fight the best. And I do see a, a Scott Quigg as one of the best fighters out there, so definitely I'm very excited for this fight. We have, obviously, fans, as always, that... that tune in to, to watch you that, that speak Spanish from Nogales, from Sinaloa. Would you like to say something in yeah, Spanish? Well, why didn't you ask him a question in Spanish? <laughs> You're testing my Rosetta Stone right now, Bob, aren't you? You want to give me a tutor for that? Uh, I don't want to mess up my Spanish and do it wrong, so I'm going to let you go ahead and take the oh. lead on this one. <laughs> bueno, simplemente agradecerle al público que está aquí. Agradecerle a, estoy muy más que agradecido con la empresa de Top Rank, con mi promotor eh, Bob Aaron. Este, por haciendo muy, muy buenas peleas como esta en esta gran cartelera eh, estoy más que emocionado y ansioso para subirme a ring este, este sábado para demostrar que soy el mejor pluma del mundo ¿no? voy ante un boxeador experimentado, un boxeador difícil que es Scott Quick un boxeador que pues, tiene mucho nombre, mucho recorrido pero estamos más que, más que confiados en el trabajo que hemos hecho ¿no? estoy más que agradecido con mi, con mi papá mi manejador Frank Espinosa, mi entrenador Manny Robles todo el equipo que, que me rodea, agradecido con todos porque 
ellos son parte del equipo, parte de lo que me han hecho ahorita, parte de lo que soy campeón, ellos se merecen igual del crédito, así que estoy agradecido con ellos por, por ayudarme en este, en este campamento, eh, este sábado van a, van a ver una gran pelea, más que nada una buena pelea, una gran cartelera donde están presentándose buenos boxeadores y bueno, de mi parte pueden esperar lo mejor, no, voy, voy a dejar mi, mi sudor, todo mi coraje, eh, mi corazón arriba del ring y esperar que ese título se quede con nosotros en México. Can you translate Eddie for that for me? Yes, he's very excited about the fight. He'd like, to, <laughs> he'd like to thank all of his fans around the world, but particularly in Mexico. He'd like to thank Bob Arum and Carl Moretti at Top Rank ESPN. And he believes Saturday will be a great fight. So you didn't know? Yeah, I didn't know, did you guys? <laughs> Anything else in closing that, that you'd like to say as we wrap this up, Eddie? No, just great to be here. Best of luck and good health. And uh, God bless to all the fighters on Saturday night. And um, I think it's going to be a great night. Bob, anything else you'd like to add? No, I just, uh, this is really uh, a spectacular card. I'm glad we could bring it to uh, Southern California. Uh, I just think the fans will love all of these fights. Uh, and uh, uh, just remind everybody, Saturday night at uh, StubHub, uh, 7.35, telecast starts on uh ESPN, that specific time. Uh, next week, uh, on the 17th, we celebrate St. Patrick's Day with Mick Conlon in Madison Square Garden, 140-pound WBC World Championship, and uh, one of the light heavyweight division is really coming into its own. There's a lot of great light heavyweights, but as Eddie told me, uh, I think the best one you'll see on the 17th, uh, Alexander Vutsik uh, fighting again for the interim WBC uh, World Championship. All right, doors open at 4.30. 4.35 will be the first bell. Tune into the ESPN app to watch all the undercard streaming live. If you can't make it down to Carson, but again, AXS.com or the StubHub box office, there are still tickets available, so grab those last few. And we'll see you tomorrow for the weigh-ins, which will also be streaming live, and then Saturday for the fights. So we're going to have you guys uh, set your mics down and pose for a few photos. Thank you, everybody, up here. Thank you, everybody, for watching, everybody for joining us today, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.